So welcome to your fourth and fifth projects. This uh, artist part of this will inform um, both your fourth and fifth projects. Um, this week, I will show you also a short how-to video at the end of this. And then next week, you will just have a how-to video for the second part of this project. Um, and part one is going to be a short exercise that is just kind of meditating or just sort of experimenting with the idea of inflations or using air to make sculpture. And then part two will be a um, more intensive project in which you'll use mylar. And right now you're looking at mylar balloons floating um, in front of you. This is what you're looking at right now is Andy Warhol's Silver Clouds. This is an installation at the Denver Art Museum. And in 1964, Andy Warhol approached an electrical engineer named Billy Kluver, who was actually um, quite instrumental in getting artists and um, different kinds of scientists working together to create art and technology. Um, and so when Andy Warhol approached him, he wanted to make a floating light bulb. And Billy Kluver um, tried and failed, um, but he then suggested to Andy Warhol that like, hey, there's this thing called Mylar that um, NASA has been making. I think you would like it. So Andy Warhol experimented with it. And this was right around the time that Andy Warhol was deciding that he was done with painting. And so he's moving on to things like more sculpture, more film, even managing the Velvet Underground. And he, um, the idea of this sort of interactive sculpture appealed to him. And he made these balloons um, and you go into a gallery and they just kind of float around you and you can bat at them and sort of be in the sculpture. So the next artist, it's the collaborative team Ant Farm and um, kind of um, crazy guys who did really absurd artwork um, and they would create these huge inflatables as a kind of nomadic architecture that they could um, sort of promote both the anti-consumerist ideas and also uh, easily install on campuses and other places to hold events. And they even created the Inflato Cookbook, which was a book that showed you how to make your own inflatable architecture and include things like um, how to inflate them and what kind of materials to buy and different structures that you can make and even a uh, guide for a uh, kid making one. So another artist that uh, uses inflatables in an architectural um, fashion is Michael Rakowitz, who uh, created this very well-known um, work called Parasite. And so he had noticed that the vents from buildings um, often emitted heat. And he thought, you know, what if we harness that heat? Um, and so he would use it to build a shelter to hook the... Um, the shelter up to the H HVAC system to have it inflate and it'll also create warmth. And so he created all these temporary shelters in cities to help um, alleviate some of the coldness or some of the weather um, for people who are experiencing houselessness. So local artist Sean Patrick Landis um, is uh, another artist who uses inflation to create works of art. And unfortunately, I could not find any images of his, um, some of his installations he's done where he's inflated and it looks kind of almost like a flood and there's like furniture hanging in, in the sky. But I did um, do have this copy of Sculpture Magazine that he was featured in. And what he did was he went to Robert Smithson's Doubled Negative, which is a very large earthwork, earthwork out in the desert. Um, and it's a place where the earth has sort of been carved out on two sides of a canyon. And he filled it with this inflatable um, mass. And so um, what you're looking at is you're, you've, there's both a view of looking through that inflated, sort of being inside of it, um, and then what it looks like from the outside. This next artist, Trevor Paglin, is actually one of my favorites. And he um, does a lot of things with technology and also surveillance and kind of working with militarized technology to demilitarize it. And in this particular uh, piece, he is using an inflatable to create a satellite.
The title of this piece is a prototype for a non-functional satellite. And the idea here is to take technology, take engineering, and use them for the exact opposite of what they normally do. It's basically a giant balloon that collapses into a very small cube. The whole thing weighs less than a pound. You could put this on a rocket. It would go up into a low Earth orbit, and when you sent a signal to it, it would inflate itself. You would be able to see it from the ground. It would look like a star slowly moving across the sky. It would last a few weeks, and then it would accumulate a lot of atmospheric drag and burn up. It's a very temporary thing. Some objects are designed to make patterns that shimmer, other ones that flicker. Other designs get bright and then get dark again. What we're doing here today is inflation tests. Trying to understand what these objects are physically as well as aesthetically. There's another one over here too. Sure. I really do think of them as post-minimalist sculptures, inspired in large part by some very early spacecraft that NASA built. All right, cool. It was a very strange time in the late 1950s, early 1960s, where people were putting things into space, but that language of spacecraft hadn't really congealed yet. What was Sputnik? It was a metal ball that went beep, 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 beep. beep. There was really no point to it other than to make it. NASA did a project called Pegeos, making big self-inflating balloons. These were communication satellites. You would be able to make a transcontinental telephone call by relaying a radio wave to one of these reflective satellites in the sky, and then the wave would bounce back to somewhere else in the world. There's something else that they wanted to do with these spacecraft, of course, which was make better maps for nuclear weapons. A lot of artists at that time were looking at them as aesthetic objects. Maybe they saw a world where we didn't have to kill ourselves with nuclear war. We didn't have to use technology to build a surveillance state. Maybe there was a different direction. And that moment is something that I'm very much trying to understand. So Tomas Saraceno uh, creates these orbs, among other things, these sort of orbs that speak about different natural elements. And um, they also are great big bubbles that you can play in. Um, I was in one once where you got on top of this huge bubble and you could climb inside and there was this membrane and you were just floating way above the uh, gallery um, floor and you could kind of sort of inch around um, and it was very inflated and very fun. Um, but he speaks about very in, you know, serious and interesting things. And um, in this particular installation, he had 20 spheres um, that were suspended in different heights in a network of black mesh. Um, and each had a different material like water, or plants, or air. Um, and it was inspired by soap bubbles. Also um, does some work with... Um, uh, like uh, propulsion and traveling. And so he has this whole group which uh, investigates completely carbon neutral um, forms of flight. Um, so in this case, he works with people to make these huge art balloons that um, are completely solar powered and um, they are made with recycled plastic. And he's also done things with uh, human flight in solar powered balloons um, and has a whole archive on his website um, about solar powered artworks and um, modes of travel. Okay, so we are going to start making um, what I'm calling a bubble tool and I'm calling it that you, you know it as a bubble wand. I'm not trying to pull a fast one, but I just want you to think in terms of a tool, something that you use to make something else. So the tool does, is something that will um, react to what you know about bubbles and how to blow bubbles, um, but then it will also, I'm asking you to think about craftsmanship too. And this is very similar to like when we are um, 
in room 201 on campus, often I'll, have, I'll introduce students sometimes to woodworking through making a spoon or some other tool, but normally it's a spoon because that's a good challenge. We're familiar with it. We know what we know about spoons, um, determine certain things about uh, how it's made, um, but then there's also room for creativity um, and we learn how to manipulate tools too to make the tool <laughs> so in this particular case this is very pared down um, but this is both working to get you to think about tools and how you make a tool and then also working with wire still and then finally things that are inflating and some of the things that you learn about bubbles you will be able to translate to mylar and balloon like structures um, next week when we start that Okay, so what you see here is um, a tray, some bubbles, the pliers, and wire. And then I have an example. You can substitute for the tray. You can use a dish, um, a bowl. You'll just need to clean it out. If it's one of your food ones, clean it out well when you're done. Um, it's just going to have bubble solution in it, um, but still. Um, or you can even just use like, you know, some sort of recycling that is nice and flat. Um, so you're going to get a length of wire and you're going to use what you've learned with the contour line drawing um, assignment to bend it into something interesting, some kind of contour line drawing. It can be a face. Um, again, it can be something else if you're, there's something else that you would rather um, draw, but do uh, think about looking at that object and you can look at your wire as you bend it, but it's going to be more or less one continuous line um, to draw the shape. And here you can see I'm just kind of winging it, trying to make a face um, for this project. Something we're thinking about is just what the bubble sur uh, solution is going to do to this. So if you have it in different elevations, it's going to have to spread further, which is fine. Um, and you're gonna see in a bit something that's very dimensional working with the solution. Um, but you do need to have some closed loops. Um, the bubble solution will not connect to something that is say like a C shape where it's a line that does not connect. So you have to create, and this is why you may need to add more wires that, you know, not just one continuous line. I would start with that, but then you will most likely add more wires to get the, um, the loop to be closed. And so now you're seeing me cut um, another, this is probably about 18 inches of wire, um, and I'm twisting it. So I'm making the handle. And an easy way to twist is just hold the two wires next to each other, you know, fold the wire in half, hold the two ends that are together and make a loop on one end and just keep turning that loop to spin the two wire tongs together so that you just have a stronger, more sturdy handle than if you just use one piece of wire. And now I have a little fork at the end that I can use to attach it to my piece by just kind of wrapping it around either side of the face. All right, I'm doing the other side and I'm almost done. And one thing, uh, that I, you will see me do with this one is just kind of try to flatten things out. You can, as I mentioned, have dimension. Uh, I'm just playing around with that one being as flat as possible because now what I'm going to do is a completely different uh, approach to this assignment. And that is to make a three-dimensional object that I will uh, try to make in bubbles with. And so what I'm making first is a cube and this actually takes me several pieces of wire to do. Uh, there might be a more clever way to do it. Um, I just didn't figure that out. But I'm using the pliers to bend the angles. And then also, um, fortunately, this wire actually is really nice and easy to work with. Uh, so it's not too hard to twist it and then untwist it if you make a mistake. And I am working on getting my camera angles and I clearly still have not, uh, there I am, there I go, 
trying to figure out remembering to get my hands in the screen. Um, but I'm just making, and this is just an experiment, so it's not that I don't necessarily want you to copy exactly what I'm doing anyway. So I'm just making this cube. So I just want to take a moment to reiterate, this is all very experimental. This is meant to be a light, hopefully fun project that just allows you to experiment with making a tool and with, um, and there's that cube, it's all finished, a little bit lopsided. Um, and it's meant to be something that is a bit lighthearted that just allows you to experiment because and get to know sort of uh, just what shapes and sort of inflation within those shapes uh, in preparation for next week because next week's assignment will be much more difficult and so I just wanted to give something light next week you only have a video that shows you how to do the project you won't have artists uh, so just keep in mind this is kind of the light week next week's a hard week um, and I just finished the cube and now I'm working on a pyramid or a um, tetrahedron so uh, you know a yeah, pyramid. <laughs> and and so, um, unfortunately, once again, I'm kind of working off camera, but I would rather you figure out your own tetrahedron than mimic what I'm doing. If you choose this route, uh, there are three routes that you can go. And the second route is to make a shape. So it could even be a sphere. It could be a hexagon, um, whatever you like. So there is my pyramid. And I'm pouring, um, not all, you need to save about an inch. So where that bottle kind of curves inward in that last little bubble next to the table um, I want you to have that much soap left over about an inch worth of soap left over um, so that we can use it for another project um, so here is me trying it out and so you can see I'm even doing it so I'm off camera. I have a camera that is mounted above me, so that's a little bit easy to do. I need you to videotape yourself um, making the tool work. Um, but if you want to get someone else to do it, if you don't want to be on camera blowing bubbles, you can also just kind of sit right off camera so that we can see. I've seen the tool. Now you can see that I'm doing this. So there's ways to do this um, that you can stay within your comfort zone. So now I'm trying... Um, with the triangle or the pyramid, the tetrahedra, drill, sorry, tetrahedral, you need to, and notice how it's clinging and it's attaching in the middle. And that has to do with, I believe that it's trying to find the least amount of surface area. There's something really, really cool and interesting that happens with the three dimensional shapes where it doesn't necessarily stay like a skin. It's very hard to see on this video, but if you make one, you'll see that it pulls into the center at a point and then actually these little um, wands like this particular one made so many bubbles I guess because I have um, you know four times the surface area as just a flat wand so the other faces made these huge beautiful bubbles and then this one just made a ton of like rapid fire bubbles and it had this really cool interior part that you saw um, and then with the uh, pure, or with the, the cube, I actually wound up stopping for a minute and getting um, some more wire to create a handle because I didn't make a handle for the cube. So now I'm going to flip it over in the solution to get all the sides coated. And I'm hoping you can see this. There's this really kind of crazy thing. Uh, it's even more pronounced with the cube than it is with the pyramid, partially because I made it bigger. 
but I don't know if you can see, but it joined. And mine's kind of lopsided. If you make it perfect, then it's more in the middle. But you can see how they join in the middle. So it's not a skin on the outside, but they actually create a new um, sort of weird shape interior. It's really super cool. And then it also blows really awesome bubbles. And I have to say, this bubble solution that I got um, is my new favorite uh solution it's really really slick and i'm hoping which is good because for this for the other project we're going to use the reminder solution for there is um i also need it to be very uh viscous or very like slick so um assignment four is part a of the inflatables assignment so assignment four is to create a bubble tool and you're going to create an interesting tool to make bubbles with focusing on creativity craftsmanship and a willingness to experiment and then upload a video of you creating bubbles using your new tool. So make sure that you allow me to see the tool and then create bubbles with it so that I can see both it as an object and then it in, in action. For the materials that you'll need, you'll need the bubble solution, wire, pliers, and a small tray plate or bowl. Everything but the tray plate or bowl is in your kit. And the instructions are to cut a length of wire, one to three feet long, bend, twist, and manipulate the wire to create one of the following. Either a three-dimensional shape to see how the solution clings to it, a contour line drawing, you choose, and you can choose the subject for that, fashioned into a tool, um, you know, something with a handle, or another creative approach that I've not thought of, but this needs to be unique, well executed, and create interesting bubbles. Once the tool is complete, pour the bubble solution into the tray, plate, or bowl, and make sure to save approximately one inch of solution in the bottle for, an, for another project. Load the tool up with solution and observe closely where and how the solution clings to the wire. Spend at least five minutes doing this. Everything you see um, with the solution sort of clinging or interacting with the shapes that you've made will help inform your next project. And then film your tool so I can clearly see your work and then blow some bubbles for the recording. Um, this will be due by the beginning of next week uh, before um, our Monday or Tuesday class and um, all the directions and the due date are in Schoology in the week four folder. Have fun.